Picture this. You've been eyeing a stunning piece of real estate, a dream investment for savvy entrepreneurs such as yourselves. But as soon as you enter negotiations, it feels like a battlefield. You've got your terms locked and loaded, but so does the other party. Now, let me guide you through the trenches of negotiation so you come out victorious without a speck of mud on your suit. Pay attention, my friends, as today's discourse might just save you from the quagmire of a deal gone sour. Imagine you're on the brink of partnering with a trailblazing startup. Your demand is a 5% stake while the founder's counter is a cold, hard 1%. You're locked in this pendulum of back and forth, with both egos and stakes high. In the throes of such negotiations, it becomes a struggle not to fold, to not come across as the weaker player. But then, a compromise is reached, and suddenly you're both the owners of a bitter 2.5%. Satisfaction? Hardly. Ties between you and the founder? Frayed. Yet, it's not all doom and gloom. Let's delve into the art of negotiation with insights learned from getting to yes. What's needed are three powerful principles to swing negotiations in your favor while keeping those bridges unburned. First, see the world through their eyes. Second, engineer win-win situations. And third, stick to objective benchmarks. The aim? Move from a face-off to sitting side-by-side -side in the negotiation room working together to carve out a deal that gives everyone a slice of the victory pie. The trickiest part? Recognizing that the person opposite you is human too, with an ego that's easily bruised. Their reality is likely different from yours. Understanding their perception can shift the emotional tides of negotiation. Say your landlord is adamant about increasing the rent because the neighborhood is deteriorating. You think it's unwarranted since you've always been prompt with the payments. The landlord sees your punctuality as a reminder to collect, while you view her reminders as nuisances. Empathy is the game changer here. Walk in their shoes, think from their desk. Could there be external pressures unknown to you influencing their stance? Once you've pieced together their perspective, lay it out for them with clarity. For instance, you might be managing an office and negotiating salary with an employee. Understand their argument for a higher raise and articulate it back to them. Often, this dance of perspectives brings you both to see eye to eye, or at least stand on a common ground where a joint solution appears much more attainable. Now you've got principle number two, the power of differing perspectives. They don't always have to spark conflict. They can be the source of the most beneficial compromises. Let's say there's one lemon, and both you and your partner want it. You find out you just need the juice, while they need the zest. Problem solved, both happy. Use this approach in business. If equity matters less to you, and keeping operational costs low is your priority, strike up a deal that balances both interests. Even in the competitive courts of professional sports negotiations, this can be a slam dunk. A general manager might offer a star basketball player a base salary capped at their offer with performance bonuses to compensate. By aligning shared goals with unique desires, what once was a deadlock is now a handshake on a deal that leaves both sides with a reason to celebrate. The third and final principle is perhaps the most defining resorting to objective standards to anchor negotiations. Imagine an accident wrecks your car, and the insurance adjuster plays hardball, lowballing you on the settlement. Here's where you strap on the robes of a judge and pull out the precedents, the market standards, the blue book values. Next time you face the adjuster, lay down these benchmarks, standing firm in the face of bluster. Utilize fairness as your shield. Iterating that an agreement comes not from pressure but from meeting at the confluence of objectivity. So, the next time you find yourself donning the armor for a negotiation, transform it from a battle into a cooperative quest. Look beyond positions, invent agreements that celebrate differences, and ground your terms in what's fair, what's just, and what's objectively agreed upon. Alright, fellas. Let's take a moment to break stride. If you're finding value in these words of wisdom, consider making your commitment to success official. Hit subscribe, smash like, ring that notification bell, 
and watch how you begin to mold the reality of your ambitions into tangible success. Turning back to our masterclass, what we've just unpacked are negotiation tactics that can cut through the noise and avoid damaged egos and fractured relationships. They are the distilled essence of the strategies from Getting to Yes by Roger Fisher and William Urey, a must-read for any of you looking to sharpen your deal-making edge. To cap it off, I'm presenting you with a challenge, a call to action. What strategies discussed today will you wield in your next negotiation? Stake your claim, articulate your response, and let's see how you plan to rise to the top with these tactics in your arsenal. And before you jump ship to your next venture of the day, remember, if these insights have bolstered your arsenal, giving a nod through a tip is always appreciated. Your generosity correlates with the value you've garnered here, the link waits below in the description. Thank you for lending me your ears and minds. Keep the wisdom locked and loaded, my friends. Go forth and conquer your next negotiation. Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for a journey into the strategic mind of power games that even now, centuries later, continue to intrigue and educate the ambitious. Imagine the ancient Romans, wielding their might as they sweep through Greece, an exemplary display of Machiavellian strength. Their entrance orchestrated by the Aetolians, the Romans were unveiled as the new dominating power, aligning neatly with Machiavelli's insights those discontented under a ruling force are easily swayed towards a robust contender. The Romans, in their conquest, amassed vast territories, yet they shrewdly sought to pacify the masses, suppressing any seeds of uprising. They utilized a multifaceted approach to establish dominion and quench the thirst for power. Imagine the meticulous machinations of the Roman Senate, planting colonies, weaving webs of alliances with minor states such as the Achaeans and Aetolians endeavoring to keep them content, yet deliberately stunted in power. They sidestepped the overtures from the formidable Macedonian kingdom, refraining from empowering those with the might to challenge them. When the opportune moment arose, they struck with precision, aiding the Aetolians against Philip V of Macedon, crumbling the king's robust reign, toppling Macedonia from the region's zenith to its nadir. In a decisive twist, when Antiochus III of Syria posed a new threat alongside the Aetolians, the Romans exerted their might once again. They refused to let this foreign force encroach upon Greece, leading to a crushing defeat against Antiochus III, and a humbling blow to the Aetolians. Through this narrative of conquest and control, the Romans illustrated an astute balance elevating the less powerful to a point, decimating those who could rival their stature, and staunchly repelling foreign influence. This was a deliberate strategy, an application of Machiavelli's doctrine he indulged the minor powers but stifle their growth, suppress the mighty, reject foreign claimants. Such measures left the Romans as the unrivaled force, with every other entity either weakened or stalled in strength. Machiavelli's words echo through the ages, that to be the architect of another's ascent is to forge your own downfall. The munificence that empowers could be rooted in cunning or via brute force, but regardless, those who ascend are inclined to distrust their benefactor. Machiavelli imparts a warning to Rulsa call to strategically forge alliances yet to remain vigilant against bolstering allies to a state where they overshadow your own power. Reflect upon King Louis XII, striving to assert his reign in Italy, yet faltering as he bolstered one of the region's supreme powers. Aligning with Pope Alexander and the omnipotent Church, Louis XII sacrificed significant authority, ultimately facing the Church's betrayal. His support dissipated, the smaller states he conquered now nothing but shadows of potential allies against the Vatican. Louis Folly exemplifies Machiavelli's portrayal of power as a coveted commodity and necessary hoard to be clung to, never squandered. The critical message it is by fortifying oneself and undermining others that power consolidates. Inversely, to empower another is to invite one's own decline. This philosophy is as relevant in the corridors of diplomacy as on the battlegrounds. Machiavelli contends that conflict is an unavoidable aspect of political life, a steadying drum beneath the veneer of societies. 
Thus, the pursuit of power is a zero-sum contest a relentless struggle where gains and losses are meticulously tallied. To evade combat, opting instead to elevate an ally, is perceived as a sign of frailty or vulnerability to be exploited. If conflict is an inevitable tide, then one must face it resolutely, not procrastinate for dread of strife. And while we reflect on the past, let's bring this into our present, 2023. It isn't all about ancient empires and dust-covered scrolls. These principles continue to resonate in the worlds of personal finance, investments, and digital marketing. The tactics of maintaining a competitive edge, handling growth and partnerships, and trading with cunning are all derivatives of the Machiavellian blueprint. Remember, in an economy where every percentage point matters, where every trade can make or break fortunes, these lessons are not just historical anecdotes but survival strategies. In the throes of modern life dating, the bulldog mindset is supreme. Men with the divine masculine essence navigating the treacherous waters of relationships must understand that power dynamics are ever-present. The wisdom speaks to us, asserting that a man's mindset needs to be one of strength and control, not unlike the Romans of antiquity. Whether it's embracing monk mode or understanding the subtle plays in human interaction, the principles are timeless. Real estate, online banking, and the need for a shrewd lawyer or attorney when navigating claims, are yet more battlefields where the Machiavellian ethos is alive and well. Understand that in marketing and advertising, the conception of campaigns, the wielding of credit, the negotiations for software contracts each is a contemporary testament to this philosophy. The judicious use of insurance policies or the strategic timing of loans could be the modern equivalent of bolstering one's ramparts. If you've mastered these ideologies, adopted a strategic approach to your investments, legal maneuverings, and the management of your digital presence, you've embraced the true spirit of Machiavellian tenure in today's world. And as you're here to grow, to add formidable value to your life, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and tap the notification bell. You're aligning yourself with information and strategies that could indeed empower you knowledge being the truest form of power in this age. As we bind up today's narrative, consider what lessons you can distill from this discussion into your daily conquests. What strategies will you deploy to ensure that in the perpetual game of power, you are the master, not the pawn? For those of you who dare to take this wisdom and wield it in your battles whether they be economic, personal, or spiritual bear in mind this channel stands as a beacon, guiding you through the storms of challenge and endeavor. A simple tip, proportional to the value you've garnered today, is always appreciated. You'll find the means to do so in the description below. Romans, Machiavelli, and the coding of power it's all been but a prelude to the odyssey you compose in your pursuit of supremacy. Until the next revelation stay sharp, stay ambitious, and let the essence of today's insights be the steel in the spine of your success.